understood something about this. I thought that uh, the guy from Poodle would be the only Japanese guy, but there are other people who... So it's about SDG. Which H SDG are we talking about? Do you have a clue? But which one? 17, the last one. Somewhere it's mentioned, but I wanted that you have a clue being not understanding what is said. That's quite difficult. And a lot of people having that feeling. This morning, uh, Martin started to talk about what I didn't got the word, the exact meaning of what uh, the title was, GIST. I'm a Dutch-speaking person. I know some languages. But sometimes words are really important. And no. our students are visiting Google Translate to help what is said. Can we avoid this? We work in one project for our iPlus Academy. It's a, a training site, mostly for um, Sub-Saharan Africa, giving training on uh, health supply chain management. You can translate a page, for, uh, for example, or, for, or front page, using Google Translate. Our students are doing it. And if you see the result, I speak Dutch, I see this translation is more or less, it's not 100% perfect. If I do it in Nepali, I see a nice page, but I do not have control over it. But our students can access our pages, every page on the internet, using Google Translate. Most teachers I speak with, they do not want to use it. They say the quality is bad. They will steal our exams. My exams will appear on the internet. No. The students, when they do the exam, they go to translate if they do not understand your question. That's reality. So we have to live with translation engines. I think um, four or five years ago, with iPlus Academy, we got an inv invitation from the University of Beira. It's clearly marked somewhere in Mozambique. They asked us, you have really terrific courses about supply chain management for health uh, systems. Can you give our students these courses? We said, yes, why not? 
But Mozambique, that's Portuguese. We had our courses in French, in English, but we did not have our courses in Portuguese. Luckily, the organization, we have about a bit minus than 30 nationalities now, I think. So I would say 50 native speakers. They are not teachers. They are specialists in selling, buying medicines. They are specialists in storing, how to store uh, medicines, but they are no teachers. We work with doctors, we work with physicists. They are good, good inside their job, but they are no teachers. And translators, not at all. So we started to look for a solution to have a course translated. After a lot of work and discussion, we went to an official translator office who did the job. They asked us, yeah, you put everything on a paper, we will translate it, and you put everything back. This is not how it works, so we discussed a bit, we made a backup, and from, uh, after one month, they said, yeah, we can translate also XML language. Everybody knows a Moodle backup file, that's a combination of XML files. So I wrote a script to generate one large XML file that had to be translated. I sent it to them. We tried it out for three or four modules. Everything went perfect. I sent the file to them. Five weeks later, the result arrived. I needed about, what can I say, four days to have that result back inside Moodle. It was an incredible job. And after all, the result was not that good. Why? Translators are good translators, but they are no teachers. And what was the, the biggest problem was it was ex expensive, incredibly expensive. Two years ago, the Russians came, COVID came, and we got an ID, a project to start giving courses on COVID-19 in Russia. So they asked me, can you install the Russian language? Yeah, everybody knows installing the Russian language is easy. You have to also translate your um, cookie policy, your site policy, whatever. We translated our three policies, and I asked around, do we have a Russian native speaker? Yes, we have. Can, can you reread our policy? Is it good translated? We used uh, Google Translate for it. And it was amazing. After two days, the guy says, excellent job. Two documents perfectly translated. I do not have, except your cookie, po cookie policy. That's more a recipe than, than a cookie policy. It's biscuit, it's always talking about biscuits. So it's not working. But in the end, when you're translating large amounts of texts, it translates fairly well. It's even better sometimes than a translation by an official recognized office. So at that moment, we said, yeah, perhaps there is some possibility with it. We also work with managers, not the Moodle managers, but the ones who are living in their ivory tower who wants numbers, numbers, numbers. How many badges, how many courses, how many users? 
you have to live with those people. On one moment, they also asked me, we have English courses, we have French courses, how many words are there in a course? What is the word? How many words? We have to compare those co courses. Which course is larger than the other one? At certain moments in life, you have to shut up and do, do your job. You provide the numbers. I developed the growth report as a result to show how, at managers, how things can grow. If you look at that way of the facts, it's not growing, it can also go down. But it was an essential part of the process because if you can count the words, you have access to the words. You can also change the words or translate them. And the whole idea was you have to calculate all the words in a course. So the three steps were there. Before we used the filters, we developed also the availability language condition. So certain um, parts of the course are available for English speaking users, other for French speaking users, other for Portuguese ones. But we found out that like in the real life, two is company, three is a crowd. It's not working with four teachers on one course. It goes well for six months, but then someone wants to change this, the other one wants to change that. So we opted to go for separate courses. One in English, one in French, one in Portuguese. And we developed a plugin that should, that makes it easy for administrators to translate a complete course, not six weeks, not at $8,000, and good quality. Those were the three facts. Here we see uh, the result, how it is for the moment. The whole idea is we want to make it as easy as backup and restore in Moodle. You backup it, it comes back in another lang language. What's most important, you see that the total, that's the total words or the total characters, I think. But you also get the price near it. How much does it cost to translate one single label of eight um, words? That cost us 0 0.0081 dollar cent. The total is 2.3 dollars. That's the difference. And it's not six weeks, it's less than six seconds. What else is important? The quality. Over here you see the original text we had in English. The second version is the translation provided by the recognized language office, translation bureau. And the third one is the one we did using Amazon Web Services Translate. It's practically the same, except we lost less styling. So there is no difference between the official translation and the one done by a machine.
the speed, six minutes to translate a complete course, that's a huge difference. You can do it overnight. The whole idea is you, you have asynchronous backup and asynchronous restore. We can build it that overnight you come back and your course wakes up in another language. The price dropped from $8,000 to $18 for a complete course. We have specialists who are not, they are good teachers, but they are not trained to be teachers. Translators are the same. They can translate, but they are no teachers. And the most important thing about translating a course is language pairs. Native translating engines. Good sample for it is Chinese English. If you translate English to Chinese, best thing you should use is the Baidu engine, not Google Translate. You, you will have far less quality with Google Translate. But if you go from Chinese to English, then Google is the right option. It's a whole new world, you can look it up, translation pairs, it's called, what you use best for this language to translate to the other one. I'll show you now the engines that are already built in, AWS, Amazon. Quite interesting because the first year you have two million characters a month for free. So you can start translating a lot without paying a single penny. The deep learning translates, which really gives good quality, but it all depends what you are translating. We are working in low bandwidth environments. A picture says a thousand words, but I also say replaces 10, 15,000 words in low bandwidth environments. If we can not show a picture, the content will arrive with our students. If the, if the bandwidth is so low, a picture never shows. Text normally does. Translating courses, if you have real good text, functions quite well. So we use a different approach than the other translating plugins. We do not work with filters. We translate the content and give it to a native speaker. That's a whole different approach. You give away your content and teachers sometimes do not like it, but it, it does work. But there is one big but. Everything has to be reread, overread by a native speaker. But it's a good time to to practice, to, to learn your content. To, to But if you have real good specialist content, it's the way to do. For the moment, the plugin is still in beta version, so it's not yet publicly available in the Moodle um, plugin directory, but it's pr publicly available on GitHub. Everybody can use it. A big warning, 
translation engines are a paying service, not to Iwala, not to iPlus Academy, but to the big tech businesses. But it's very interesting that the price is not that high anymore. One of the biggest advantages that you can have now with neural translation is that you can give extra feedback. It's not just translating text, you can add text because Amos is a nice sample of it. You can use Google Translate, but it's not translating very good. Why not? Because it doesn't have feedback. One of the things we have trouble issues with is the questions. Why? We are still translating question by question. That's the wrong approach. We should take every question together and translate it once with the feedback test. Take. On that moment, you see the quality rises high. And it's not only the, um, that translation engines have trouble with short texts. Our questions normally are not so well written. Everybody uses ne neg um, a negative or a double negative in a, in a question. That's what language engines have trouble with. If I have to write a text that really has to be good, I write my text in English, I let it translate into my native Dutch, and if I see if the language engine has issues with it, probably it's not well written. It's better to change it. Why? It will be more simpler and clearer. The same with engines, uh, with questions. If I have my Dutch text and I re-translate it to English, I will see other difficulties. But it's, it can be a way to have a better readable text. So the active custom translation still has to be implemented. The asynchronous translation still has to be in, implemented. I'm still suffering with the changes of the question bank behavior in Moodle 4, but it is working for everything except the questions in Moodle 4. It's working for 3.11 and Moodle point four. I also have to implement still translating, automatic translation of Microsoft Word, uh, PDF documents. It's easy, it's done. This is the overview of my code. So we are talking about 419 lines. It's not that difficult. I use the same approach like the global search and replace in Moodle. I just had to adapt that part of Moodle to have it work. It's simple, it's clear, and it's expandable. Why? Those engines are the, the power. People can write, I think the Google Codes engine has 24 lines, AWS has 34 lines, so anybody can now start 
implementing extra engines. The Baidu language, for example, I think in Japan there will be also other engines that are interesting. I read something about the Italian translation engine that's really interesting for Italian. It's simple, it's, it is expandable. So the plugin you can find on GitHub. Tools translate. I have to thank a Japanese school who made 18 videos about sustainability goals. They are nice, but you cannot use it. My plan was to have them translated by neural machines, but singing children's voices is a nightmare. There is no transcript. So it was really a bad sample, but I know we work in different environments. There are a lot of bad samples in this world. We work for Iwala.net a small company working from Hong Kong and we are working a lot for a Dutch NGO, iPlus Academy. I still have to mention that this plugin won an honorary mention on the UN and European community hackathon this year because UN knows, yeah, this has some possibility. I plus solutions mostly work with money from USA to World Bank, WHO. It's a return on investment, I always say. We are using that money for good purposes. So any questions, welcome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, we, we do have some time for questions. So if uh, you'd like to raise your hand and then wait for the mic. Yeah, congratulations on the award. I saw we highlighted that on Moodle.com. Um, it seems in, the, in English language we have an expression, um, you wait ages for a bus and then several come at the same time. And it's a bit, this year with translation plugins, we have one for Academy and there's one here with the, which won an award. So it'd be really interesting to find out more about this. So, question? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. My name is David from Kuli SCP in Brussels. Uh, I have a very, uh, one question for you. But before that, thank you for that uh, impressive uh, presentation. I've been dealing with uh, translation for a while and, and I think you just break something out there for me. But just one point, um, when do you think the Moodle, um, the plugin will be available to be able to use the Moodle for questions? I think you said in your presentation that that is not at the moment, not, uh, not available to use it? Not yet available. The, the whole question bank changed. So it's working in 3.11, but the whole system changed in Moodle 4, so it's not yet finding all the questions. That's the issue, okay. but it's an issue that can be solved. Okay, should we be looking at maybe one month, two months, uh, three months? <laughs> two months, it depends on how much plugins are using the same because on some moments I need help to look how are they doing it to find that. And at, up until now, the, the samples available on Moodle were not that clear to find every question in every question bank. Thank you very inside much. Inside the course. 